Welcome to our Singray webinar of the month with David Hutchinson. We will be talking tonight about the infused neutral polarizer versus the LB color combo polarizer. What are the differences, how to use them, uh, and how to get the most out of them. A little bit about our speaker tonight. Um, Dave has over 15 years of photography experience. He has more than 100 images published in books, magazines, calendars around the globe. He is continuously inspired by both landscape and wildlife photography and has photographed across Western Canada, the Yukon, several United States, and as well as Italy. Recently, David began, became Singray Filter's first international brand ambassador, and he also represents other well-known brands like F-Stop Gear, Topaz Labs, and FLM Canada Tripods. He's originally from St. Catharines, Ontario. He moved to British Columbia, Canada in 1993 and then to Sydney, British Columbia in 2002, where he currently resides. In October 2020, David quote unquote retired from his past career in the fitness industry to pursue nature photography full time. He is passionate about preserving old growth forests and works to increase public awareness through his nature photography and videography. David recently won the prestigious Best in Class Award in Fine Art at the Professional Photographers of Canada National Image Competition. He also it was a qualified as a finalist in the same competition for the Canadian Photographic Artist of the Year. David also recently received his Advanced Operations Drone Pilot License, which has helped him employ drone photography for a diverse range of photographic work. He also leads photography workshops on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and the B British Columbia mainland coast and the Arctic. These are all listed on his website, which we will provide to you at the end. So with that, Dave, you want to take over? Thank you. Thank you very much, Michelle. That, that was, that was a, uh, a very good summary <laughs> of, the <laughs> last of the last 15 years. Um, yeah, no, I'm uh, yeah, happy to be here and, you know, I uh, wanted to thank Singray for having me as one of their brand ambassadors and having me do a, a talk uh, tonight about um, two uh, polarizers, one quite new, like maybe six, seven months old in the LB color combo has been around for a long time. I got my first LB color combo, I think I'm gonna guess around 2007, 2008. So I've been using the Singray products for, well, about 15 years. So it was recommended to me by a few other very well-known photographers in the industry at the time. And um, yeah, I've just I've loved the product uh, and the product line overall ever since. So that's kind of a bit of a, a quick recap there. Um, but yeah, so this particular image here is with the infused neutral polarizer, just to kind of kick off the, uh, the, the home page there. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just get into it. Um, so what, so what I'm going to talk about again, probably obvious now with the title is just making a comparison, uh, between the, the, the newer infused neutral polarizer and the LB color combo. And, you know, I, and I also refer to them as CPLs, you know, circular polarizer is what CPL, I think most people probably know that, but um, I don't, don't want to completely assume that. But so I refer to them as CPLs a few times throughout the presentation. Um, you know, really it's when to use which filter for what type of subject and also the season. It, 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 that can also have a big bearing on it and the, the, the light and the subject matter, the, 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 the warmth of the light or the coolness of the light, the, those types of things. So that's what I say when, when to use each filter. Uh, examples, and I've got a few comparisons that are with and without polarizers and with each of the two to give you an idea of what they, uh, to make a comparison of what they look like with, without a polarizer as well. So you can see, Kind of the, the the difference and sometimes it's dramatic and sometimes it's subtle just really depends on the subject matter and some tips cautions and questions and answers can be at the end but like what michelle said throughout the the the, the powerpoint presentation it, it's fine to ask questions anytime you want it, it, it it's completely fine with me I, I don't mind stopping and starting um yeah and so the, this forest shot you can see a uh, little bit more vibrance from the other one, a little bit more 
uh, warmth, just to kind of give you a couple of uh, hints, that's the LB color combo. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, get into some specs. So again, these are just some basic specifications um, with the, on the left is the infused neutral polarizer. And, and some of these uh, uh, quote unquote percentages, they're approximate. So it's not, I don't think it's an exact science from what I've seen. So an approximately an 8% increase in saturation, especially with greens and reds. And that's why I love the infused polarizer for the forest. And I live on Vancouver Island and I live literally miles away from rainforests all over the place. So, you know, forest is a, is a, is a big part of what I do, waterfalls and long exposure photography, but, but you know, a lot of nature photography. Um, so great with the greens and, and the reds too. Uh, uh, very neutral uh, white balance on the infused, uh, right in the title of the polarizer, infused neutral polarizer. So what that also means to kind of make sense of it is it, it doesn't warm up the image very much. So, it, it, and again, that's a good thing because that's more of what the LB color combo does. It has more of a warming effect and it increases the, the white balance. So like when I say increase, maybe from 5,500 to 6,500 degrees Kelvin, that's what I mean by increasing white balance, making it warmer. Increasing the number when you see it in Lightroom or whatever program that you're using to edit. Um, both increase contrast. I've found that uh, this is a smaller increase in contrast with the, the infused versus the LB, but it's subtle. I think the, the LB is a little bit more, uh, 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 a bit more of a boost in, in contrast, I guess is the best way to say it. A little bit of a difference in the stops of light that it holds back. So I, lots of different ways to term that density. Um, basically, when, when I'm teaching workshops, I explain it as it's holding light back from coming into the camera. So uh, depending on how it's dialed in, because these are polarizers and you, you turn them. Actually, I can just, I've got one right on my desk here. So you, you actually, you, you spin them to dial in the density and the reflection control and the effect that you really want. Uh, so on the, on the infused with my testing, it's about three to four stops of light loss. So when you've got it dialed in full, it would be, it's very close to four stops of lost light. Uh, the LB color combo, almost the same. It's about a third of a stop difference. So not really that big of a deal. Uh, so often when I'm photographing in the forest, uh, I will have to boost my ISO. Uh, to compensate and depending on if there's movement if i'm in a valley somewhere and it's very quiet then maybe i can get away with a five second exposure and the, and the ferns aren't moving um, or 10 seconds sometimes so when i say boost your iso it really depends on the scene as well but often i i need to compensate to some degree by having the polarizer benefits and increasing the iso is the, is the go-to. If you don't want to sacrifice any depth of field, um, then you just, you, you've only got so many variables to go with. <laughs> so an ISO tends to be the, 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 the go-to for um, getting any kind of shutter speed that I want to freeze any motion that might be say in the forest or, or even like a waterfall where, where I might want to have a specific uh, shutter speed to create an effect that I want. So we'll, we'll get into those. We'll see some examples of those. We did so, have a uh, quick question before you sure. get too far yeah. into it. Um, someone asked, are these the gold and blue polarizing filters? They are not, and I'll send you the link to that filter. Um, but what is the infused polarizer infused with? Uh, Do you know where the well, name comes from? <laughs> well, I think it's more infused with reds and greens, I think it would be more of a sing ray question. It, it's probably from a manufacturing standpoint, but what I can have share with, that's a great question, infused with being neutral and reds and greens. So that's, that's what it is being marketed as. And that's what I found that it reveals when I use it. So yeah, and then infused can be kind of a little bit of a it's a different kind of name. I've never heard of an infused polarizer, but I don't know. It's just, that's the name they chose. 
So I, I, I don't know the behind. I don't know if anybody's from Singray on the. On we the do webinar. have a couple of technical folks from Singray. Yeah. Um, yeah, great. I, I, when I have an answer, I'll chime back in. But that would be awesome. Yeah, that, that would be great. But th this is what I've found in these specs from my testing and in the field. And this is what Singray loves. They they want you know ambassadors to put the product in the field and use it versus computer specs. So, because they're, you know, they're made with design and they're made in a factory and, and, um, but yeah, so good question. I'm sure we'll get a, a more of a, a better answer than what I just said. Uh, but yeah, well, do we have, we have another, um, we've got Gordon for those using the LBCP. If, if you can do some compare and contrast between that and the infuse. Yep. That's coming up, Gordon. So we'll get on with it. Uh, so the next part is I start with the infused polarizer, the infused neutral polarizer, and I've got an example of five, five images that we'll, that we'll go through and we'll talk about. Um, I just got to move myself so I can read it. So again, as I've mentioned, very effective in the forest. Um, not a lot of post-processing required. It definitely, it saves on post-processing time by using these fillers, uh, filters. Um, I wouldn't say that there's no post-processing because they're raw files. They still need to be processed, um, you know, for shadows, highlights, uh, whatever adjustments want to be made. Could be luminosity masks, could be all kinds of different things, the special effects. Um, AI is a big buzz now. You know, it, it's just, uh, it's whatever the creative vision is of the, of the photographer uh, and how they want to edit it. But in my world, less editing is less time and just more efficient, but everything still needs to be edited. So this is an edited image. I have examples of some images that are unedited for the comparisons. I did that on purpose. So again, these, these images coming up are edited. Um, but to, so natural rendition of colors. And what I mean by that is that the greens are really green. Sure, they're boosted a little bit in the saturation, but they're not fabricated. They're not, they don't look, to me, they don't look fake. I guess I'm just being blunt. Um, what I really also like about the infused is using it in the summer. Uh, so maybe like late spring into summer. This is a summer shot on Vancouver Island. This is in July. So I'd only had the infused polarizer for two weeks. I think I got it mid-June and this is early July. So I really, this is some of the first shots that I ever took with it. Um, the, the one saying right sent me sent me one uh, really great for reflection control on foliage too like like you can see these ferns are quite rich and the richness is because they're not washed out with reflection and, and glare uh, so again this is a rainforest just about all the time the place is wet even when there's a drought it's wet because it's right by the right by the coast and everything is kind of a little damp all the time except for in the winter it's really damp like you can't even really go to this place now because the road could be washed out and who knows, it'd just be too, too risky to go in the middle of the winter. Um, but I usually go there in May, June, July. Uh, so it's a provincial park in BC on Vancouver Island. But uh, yeah, so again, just to reiterate, great in the forest, but why? Because it's neutral. It's not warming, but I don't want it to warm on purpose because the color temperature of the light in the summer is already warm. I don't want to warm, warm more. I don't want it to be warmed on top of warm. So I really like the neutral effect because of that particular quality. The greens, it's great. And, uh, and the reducing of the glare on foliage, but it goes way past that. It can be water, could be paint on cars, uh, uh, a, a damp sidewalk, uh, roots, trails, like polarizers can be used on so many different things. Windows, windows on buildings that might have a nasty glare to them. Polarizing uh, filters can be great for those types of things too. So lots of applications. This is just a little snapshot of my world with nature photography and where I live and what I photograph. But somebody that's in the desert in Arizona, they could make wonderful use of both the infused and the LB color combo, you know, depending on the season and how rich the colors would be. 
then you would choose the polarizer appropriately. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and then on all the images, I've got some specs. So you can see the shutter speeds, the, the ISO, the lens, the gear that I'm using. So you can get an idea of the, uh, the, the specs and, and what to expect. So like this is, this is 1600 ISO, but you know, it's at a third of a second. So to still get these ferns sharp, they can't be moving at a third of a second. So, you know, I, I could have maybe even dropped it down to 800 ISO and then it would have been, I don't know, it would have been close to, close to a second or two thirds of a second. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's, it's being aware of any kind of movement that would be in the forest at the same time or whatever you're photographing. If there's a wind or anything like that. And if it gets, if it's really windy, then sometimes you just can't use a polarizer because your ISO would be just so high, unless you can sacrifice depth of field and get some shutter speed that way. Again, depends on what you're photographing and what you're trying to communicate. Um, so that's the first example there. Um, and let's- A couple of things. Um, yeah. I did get an answer back from Singray. Evidently the word infused refers to the secret sauce. So I can't tell you, um, right. but essentially it's a combination of a neutral polarizer and a color um, intensifier. So it's an infusion of those two technologies. And that's all I can say. Um, <laughs> and then we had a question from the audience that I think is pretty good. Um, it's my understanding that polarizers are effective when the subject is a 90 degree angle from the sun. Does that rule apply with these filters? Yeah, you know, I think that, that, that that's an old rule that's been around for a long, long time. And, and the way that I'm going to answer that is that that would be when you would have the maximizing effect of a polarizer when you're 90 degrees to the sun. But if you're 60 or 70 degrees to the sun and it's nine in the morning or three in the afternoon, by all means, you can use a polarizer and, and get a lot of benefit by using it. You can use them all times of the day. I've used them right at, at, at sunset to get a really rich royal blue sky. You know, like really rich sky. Yeah, sure, it's going to be a longer shutter speed, but that might be desired because you might want to slow down the movement of the water if it's a sunset or a, a seascape sunset. Um, but uh, yeah, so to answer the question on that, I think that that that's been around for a long time. That um, kind of tip or guideline, I guess, for using polarizers at you know ninety degrees to the sun, but. I don't follow that rule. I use them all different times of the day, but sure, it, it is going to have its maximizing effect when you've got that, that angle to the sun, but use them all the time. Um, do we have anything else popping up in the questions? The only question left is, have you tried this for black and white? I'm just trying to think if I've tried them from black and white. It's a great question. Or just if I've if I've converted anything to black and white, I don't think anything's jumping out at me. I have what I, it's, it's a Singray product, but with doing long exposures with their 15 stop more slows, I've done black and whites that way. Um, but okay. no, I don't think from using the infused polarizer, maybe with the LB color combo, but all the images today are all color. Um, but um, no, I don't think I have with the infused yet. Maybe I just haven't had it long enough or seen a scene that's kind of jumped out at me as being black and white. But I'll keep that in mind. So that's a great that's a great uh, comment and question to, to keep in mind. But yeah, they can be. I think they can have a place for black and white photography too. And the reason is, is because it's going to, especially if you have a deep blue sky, that's going to go black when you convert it to black and white. Uh, these polarizers help dramatically with, with sky. Uh, and so, I do know the um, infused neutral polarizer will allow you to capture more information in raw, which gives you more opportunities later. Yeah, and the, right, exactly. Yeah, there's lots of shadow detail, highlight recovery. Uh, and the other thing with the Singray filters that I've noticed over the years is the incredible clarity and sharpness that you still retain because uh, you are photographing through another piece of glass and it's never been a problem for me, you know, like to, to get the detail that I am looking for, because some of these images you've already seen, they get blown up big. 
and they have to be sharp, you know, or it's just not going to look good when it's blown up 30 by 45 or 40 by 60 or something. It, 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 so Singray is bang on with their formulas that they, and the quality of the glass that they're using to, to have a real sharp reproduction. Um, so yeah, I love that. Um, but yeah, so again, uh, effective in the forest, but I chose this image here because you're, you're seeing some of the reds being pulled now. So we've got the greens and then we've got the reds in this big cedar tree and, and uh, down here in the dirt, this dirt was very red. So it's, it's pulling out the reds there and it's great for reflection control on bark as well on trees. It's not only the green, but on the side of trees that would have like wet bark on them, that can really have a lot of glare to it. Sometimes you don't even notice it until you put the polarizer on and think, oh, wow, well, that's gone. Like it completely, well, I say completely, but you know, maybe 99%. It just takes out the glare off of bark right away when you dial it in. Um, so that's another feature that I like working with you know, using either one of the polarizers, but I'm referring to the infused polarizer right now. Um, the reflection control on the bark is great. So, and so again, reds and greens, that's why I chose this one to show how the, the reds and greens can be boosted. Again, uh, reduces glare on the foliage. You can see all these ferns in the foreground and all this, all this greenery down here. You can see my mouse as I'm whittling it around. Uh, like virtually no glare and no reflection on this foliage. So that's all the polarizer doing that. And it's really having an attention to detail when you dial in the polarizer too. It's not something that if a listener or a participant tonight is really new to using, you know, these types of polarizers, they're more like hybrid polarizers because they do a couple of different things. Um, but infused or LB color combo, it, it takes some time to get used to them. You have to take many pictures to, to get the skills of dialing it in to see the changes. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's dramatic. It, it really depends on the subject matter and the light, you know, the time of day and, and then the season. Uh, so there's several factors involved. Um, so again, yeah, spring and summer when warmer tones may not be desired. That's a key one right there. And again, I, it's kind of a bit repetitive, but I want to make sure I hit home on these, on these points because they're really important because if you're looking at purchasing one, you want to purchase it for the right reasons. So if you're looking for the polarizer to have a warming effect, don't get the infused polarizer because that's not what it's designed for. That would be the LB color combo, which is coming up. Um, so we'll you know, scoot along and see if we can find another one with you know, lots, of, lots of greens again. You can see the richness in the greens, but they're still true greens. To, to me, it doesn't look like they're fabricated or whatever the language we would want to use. I just say fake. It doesn't look real, but it does. It, it, to me, it does. So it's just a, it's a subtle boost, but the boost is also coming from reflection control as well because it's not this foliage is not getting washed out with direct sunlight it's the reflection control properties of the sin rate filters are great you know it's one of the one of the one of the several reasons that i that i use them um, you know the boosting of the colors is one thing but the reflection control on the foliage you just can't i can't say enough about it because it's that's the look that, that, that you're seeing here is by having that that richness is coming through that reflection control and and it's neutral so it's not being warmed because it's already it's already summer this is a summer shot again so i don't want to warm it up anymore and if i did want to warm it up a little bit i could do it in post-processing uh, but so the the neutral aspects are are beneficial uh for certain times of the year especially and I'm saying that from being on Vancouver Island, you could, the listener could be somewhere else. They're going to have to improvise on what is going to work for them and their subject matter on where they're at, because the seasons may not change as drastically say as in New Mexico as versus Vancouver Island. So what I'm talking about is from where I live, 
So that's for most of the images, I think, on the presentation. I don't have anything from off of Vancouver Island, I don't think. So, uh, yeah, very good in the spring and the summer. Just a natural look and feel. Like, that's the, that's the neutral. The neutral is a natural look and feel for, uh, for the subject matter. Um, we have a, a question here. Sure. Um, since auto white balance in the camera probably removes the warming of the LBU color combo polarizer, is there really a meaningful difference between the LB combo and the infused neutral? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a difference in regards to warming, for sure. Yeah, there's a, it's a significant difference. And I have some uh, comparisons that are coming up that will hit home to more answer that question. But Yes, definitely the, 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 the warming effect is, um, it's significant. So uh, the LB color combo being the warming one and the neutral one not being warming. Um, uh, just what was the beginning of the, of the question again? She was asking about white balance. Yeah, well, the white balance removed the, the benefits of the polarizer basically. Yeah, no, the other thing, the other thing too, is that just kind of a note on that is that in my camera on the, I think the Z7 had it as well. And the Z7 too, I set it to natural light auto. So I set, I don't have my white balance set on auto. I have, I love the natural light auto for outside. Um, so that's just another, maybe a tip for some people to look at that there are, and you can change it in post-processing anyways. So if you're shooting in raw, then it's, it's an easy adjustment to do. But I think that's the, that's the other point to hit home here with these, with these two polarizers is that as you get skillful using them, you have less post-processing to do. I'm not saying you don't have any, because everything that's raw, in my opinion, you, 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 maybe you get lucky one out of a thousand and you don't have to do much to it. But everything needs to be processed because they're raw files. They're just data files and they're typically a little on the flat side. But with polarizers, it puts some life into the raw files and you have to do less to them, but you still have to do something to them. So, yeah, you can adjust the white balance and, you know, you could, in, in, in other words, like a neutral polarizer, you could warm it up if you wanted it to be warmer and the LB color combo, sometimes I cool it down a little bit. It just, it just depends on what the look and feel is that you want after you see it on your computer and you start editing it and just reliving the moment and bringing it to life. And it's all personal preference, but um, yeah, I just like to get it as close as I can in camera and it just saves me time later. Um, so this is an image that was in the winter. This was actually wasn't that long ago, maybe a month or two ago. But you can see how it really pops the greens. Um, even I just, I haven't used the neutral a lot in the winter, but this is, you know, this is kind of late fall, early winter. Winter here doesn't necessarily mean like five feet of snow. <laughs> it's not Buffalo, <laughs> but um, uh, well, Buffalo is probably 10 feet of snow, but um, yeah, so you can see the, <clears throat> in this image, it's more of a, it's a neutral effect. Again, it's, it's an image that's slightly on the, on the cooler side. I maybe might have, I might have warmed it up a little bit, but, you know, I wanted to try it to see what it would be like with the greens that are a little bit duller in the winter. Again, it's a rainforest, so they're not kind of totally dead, um, but, you know, it's not like a desert kind of thing, but yeah, so I think that it does a good job in the winter, but if you want to warm up at the same time and you're using the infuse because you're photographing in cooler temperature of light, like in the winter, then you may want to consider the LB color combo, or you would be maybe post-processing differently with the infused neutral, because it's not going to warm it up. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's a significant difference between the two. Um, yeah, then we'll get into uh, some comparisons with the with the LB color combo. Um, move along here, and just a seascape here to show how the infused can also work with skies. There and the LB color combo too. 
Uh, but we'll just stick with this one. I think this might be the last image of the of the edited examples, you know, post-processed examples. But uh, that was one of the things that really attracted me to the LB color combo in the very beginning, 14, 15 years ago, is that I loved what it did to skies and how it would punch up the contrast in the clouds. Um, and I have some before and after examples actually of this image here. And it's actually it's quite dramatic, but we'll get to that. Um, so a, a good boost in the blues, but a separation between the blues and the clouds. So it gives more depth uh, with the, with, with the, the, the contrast uh, properties of the polarizer, especially as you turn it, you'll see it become more and more vivid as you dial in the polarizer and you'll see the clouds pop. Often I'll turn it back just a little bit and, you know, especially on the LB color combo, I'll turn it back maybe a 16th of a turn or an eighth of a turn. Um, again, it's just a taste just to have it maybe just not so punchy. But again, you just you get that feel of it by using it. And after you've taken 10, 20 images, you'll start to get you start to get the feel of it. Um, so, yeah, I really like the increased contrast and in clouds with the with the infused neutral polarizer. Uh, no, again, no warming effect. So again, this was only taken a couple of days ago, maybe like on the weekend. Uh, so again, very, it's January. It's very kind of cooler light temperature, more blue light, more of a, a blue color cast. So again, a very neutral. It's communicating the true feel for what the shot was at the time. It, it's, yeah, like the post-processing for this image is like, I don't know, a minute or two. It's not, it's not very much. Um, yeah, so it's, it's largely the way that it was. A little, bit of a little bit of a boost in the blues. I probably just changed the white balance a little bit on the blues in the sky. Maybe open up the shadows a bit on the, on the pier. Um, but yeah, it's, it's true to the scene. So that's the way that the sky was. And then the, the, the polarizers are great for making those skies leap out, especially when there's blue in between the clouds. So yeah, that's what I, I really recommend either of them for that. Um, I love what you said about being true to the scene too. Using polarizer, sometimes it's about creating a dramatic effect and changing the scene, changing the clouds. But a lot of times it's, it's really just about getting in camera what you see with your eye. Yeah, and I think that's a great, a great point that, that, we're, that we're hitting home here is that you know, you're reaching back to those feelings when you were on that scene. Um, yeah, the neutral polarizer is going to is going to do that. It's going to it's kind of reproducing what you saw, uh, especially when it's the cooler light temperature in the winter, um, like this because it was very cool. So uh, and in, and in the summer too, at the forest where I didn't want to warm it up. So that that's also true to what I saw. I didn't want to boost it anymore. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a great benefit to either of the polarizers. It just it depends on what you're photographing and when, and the type of light and the subject. But we've got examples here that you can kind of have as a reference point. So you can see how this shutter speed drops a lot here, you know, down to a tenth of a second. I think that the base without the the base exposure, without the polarizer was one over one sixtieth. So yeah, it slows it down quite a lot, which can be beneficial for lots of different types of photography, you know, waterfalls, seascapes, where you would want to slow it down. Some things you might not want, like the forest, it can kind of go either way. You just have to be careful. And you might want some movement in your forest shot, I don't know. Like it just, it depends on what you want to communicate. So, um, so that's an example of a, of a seascape with the infused neutral polarizer. And now we're gonna get into uh, five examples with the LB color combo. And you'll see, you start to see some differences. So this is again, this is in the winter. So the sun sets in this part of Vancouver Island that it lights up this sandstone rock wall like it's like the middle of the day. Um, but in the summer, it won't because the summer, the sun sets way down the way down Vancouver Island and this, this doesn't get any sun in the summer. 
uh, not at sunset. It'll get it during the day, but then it's too washed out. Um, so when you, again, the LB color combo, different type of filter. It has a warming component put into it. And again, Singray may have a different way of their technical terminology on what it is, but my job is to explain it real life and in the field. So I'm not using any technical information because I don't, I don't make the filters. So, but for, for this particular image, it worked really well because I'm getting, I'm getting my stops of light for the shutter speed that I want for the waterfalls. So still got a little bit of texture in the waterfalls. I don't want the shutter speed to be like 10 or 15 seconds or something, because then this waterfall is just going to go all, all smooth and all white. Um, not unless that's what you want, but I like seeing some texture and a little bit of lines in there. And I just, it, it just gives it a bit more depth and dimension to have those. Uh, I just call it texture in the waterfall, but that's created with the shutter speed. But the LB color combo, or it could be the infused as well, but I'm just, you know, in this particular one, I chose the LB color combo was my go-to. And it has been for many, many years. Uh, reflection control on the sandstone rock walls and on the water down at the bottom. Like, so it's the, this polarizer is doing several things, several jobs on this one image. It's punching up the sky here in the blue sky, these clouds. So it's giving contrast up there. It's giving a boost in this foliage, pulling out these reds, pulling out the oranges and reds in the sandstone rock walls, the reflection in the water here. So there's no glare in the water, or very little. Um, and then the, the slower shutter speed effect for the waterfall. So we've got geez, at least four things that are going on here that the polarizer is creating. It's basically, it's enabling to do that. The key thing is to dial it in, right? You know, because if it would have been turned a quarter of a stop in either way, you wouldn't get this effect. So there'd be glare in the water, uh, the sky would be different. And yeah, this, well, the shutter speed would be different too for the waterfalls. So again, it just takes some time to get used to it. So if you're thinking about, or you even maybe even have one and you haven't used it in a while, give yourself time to experiment with these fil filters because they do take time to get used to. When you get, once you get used to them, you can make images like this. It's anybody can do it. Um, but yeah, it just takes some, it takes some getting used to. So again, just to kind of go over it again here, you have foliage, clouds, uh, extra boost in saturation. Um, and that's, it's kind of not really right when I say that, but I'm trying to simplify here is that they both do 8% approximately boost in saturation. But I think what we're seeing is that because it looks like it's boosted a bit more, it's because it's being warmed. Because the, the LB color combo has the warming properties to it. And so it's, it's visually giving you the effect that the colors are being more saturated when they're actually being warmed. And they're not being any actually being more saturated than the infused. It's just the infused neutral and the LB color combo is warmer. So it, the LB color combo works great in the winter because that's when I want to have some more warmth because we're, we're kind of, we're lacking it because it's a, a cooler temperature of the, of the air and of the season, uh, like in January, this is a January shot. This was January. I think it was last year. It wasn't this January. Um, it was January last year. Um, so you can see that, you know, it's right in the, right in the heart of right in the middle of the winter on Vancouver Island anyways. Um, yeah, so then the shutter speed here, 1.3 seconds for waterfalls, quarter second, one second, two second, anywhere in that range. Depends on how fast the water's moving um, and what your what look that you like. So I like it in and around this shutter speed on this waterfall. So gives you gives you lots of things to ponder on for what this polarizer is able to create. So, so quick see. question on yeah. uh, skies and clouds. Yeah. All polarizers do great things with skies and clouds. What makes these different? It's, it's just the contrast. The, 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 again, that there's going to be some technical properties to it with, you know, probably proprietary information from Singray. But yeah, I've used lots of different and experimented with lots of different polarizers that 
you know, they, they don't do the same or most of them don't do the same as what the, what the, what the Singray filters do in regards to just the contrast and the pop in the clouds and in the sky. Like the best way I can explain it is the, is the, the, the depth and the dimension between the actual blue sky and the clouds. It kind of creates more separation. That's the visual effect. That's what happens. I don't know how they do it, but I can just, I can tell you, I can tell you how to do it, <laughs> but I don't know what the science is behind it. But yeah, it, it just gives that nice pop in the sky. Again, you have to dial it in properly. You have to turn the polarizer. You just can't whip it on your camera and it's going to be good to go um, or on your lens. Um, it, and I think so, part of it also is with the with the warming effect of these two polarizers on the foliage and on the landscape, it just creates even more contrast between that and the sky. Exactly. Yeah. And the other thing, too, on the coattails of what Michelle just said, is that the LB color combo does warm the blue slightly. So if you want, if the if it's a if it's a a seascape or a landscape for that matter, that's got a lot of sky in it, then the infused polarizer is going to be truer blues. Those blues are going to be really blue. And but if there's something else in the scene that you it is really important to warm then I would go with the LB color combo and then I would just choose the sky separately in Lightroom and just cool it down a little bit because it's going to get warmed with the LB color combo. So we're going to see that when we when we get through these five images of the LB color combo and I've got a couple of comparisons. You'll you'll the pieces of the puzzle will start to start to come together because again these images are edited. So it, it's um, warmth and then you got this blue sky so you're it's like you've got more depth and dimension by using the polarizer for what the properties are of it um let's move along to a another image uh some ferns these were very cooperative ferns they were they became my friends they didn't move at all <laughs> so they were very very cooperative uh, so again when you want some increased contrast, increased pop, uh, vibrance, some extra vibrance. I, that's the way that I'm terming it, is that it, it, you're kind of, you're, you're warming up your greens, you're uh, warming up your reds, warming up, uh, well, the blues are getting warmed a little bit, which is nothing, you can't have them, but you can't have everything. You can't have cooler blues and then warm up yellows at the same time. I just don't think it's going to work. Um, it would be pretty crazy polarizer to do that. Um, so that's where there's some post-processing comes in. If you have an image that has a wide range of colors, like the waterfall, the previous slide. But on this one, uh, this is kind of like late winter, early spring. And yeah, the LB color combo worked great. But you know, if these were moving around, no, nah, sometimes I don't even use a polarizer. If I need to be able to say I'm doing a focus stack, like, most of the time, the shutter speed is just going to be too slow. Not all the time. I do have, I think I got one example of a focus stack with the LB color combo, but it's a bit of a rarity because when you're doing a focus stack, you want to have some fast shutter speeds, boom, 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 boom. So you can get it when, it, when the subject's not moving. These are all outdoors. They're not in controlled environments where, you know, sometimes you could take a picture of a rose inside. You know, focus stack and it's not moving you're in a controlled environment then go crazy you could use the lb color combo on it and punch punch up the colors and it's not going to move because you don't have any wind if you so this is all outside that i'm talking about where we've got you know just natural winds this fern this grove it's actually in a valley so it, it doesn't get a lot of wind anyways so but even a breeze you just have to be attentive to that with polarizers in general. And you can see how the, you know, I've got the ISO has crept up a little bit here. Again, a sixth of a second, I got pretty lucky, you know, cause it didn't, it, it wasn't moving. It, it, these ferns were like dead still. 
So again, this is edited, but it's edited for my taste and what I wanted to communicate. Um, but yeah, so it's increased vibrance, contrast, color, reflection control, all those things that we've been talking about. Um, virtually, uh, no glare. I don't see any glare on anything. So um, yeah, that's what I love about these filters. They just, it just makes your images rich and, and lively. Um, again, it's the, the skill now is to choose which one to use when, and you're starting to kind of get an idea of that. There's the seasons and the, the, the you want it to be warmer, do you want it to be cooler in regards to the, the, the look and feel of the scene. Um, so that's where we're starting to, that's the, the qualities that I'm trying to hit home on doing this. So Dave, does warmth depend more on whether it's sunny versus cloudy or seasons? I think it could be both. Yeah, I think seasons is a huge part of it that I've observed over the years. You know, when you start getting into spring and summer, um, well, in the northern hemisphere, the, the color temperature of the light starts getting warmer. But yeah, sure, if the clouds come over, then it's going to cool off a little bit. So yeah, I don't know if it's going to be that drastic, but it's the, it's the temperature of the light and the angle of the light and, and, and your subject matter starts to change like the ferns in the forest in December on Vancouver Island are completely different than July. You know, you get a lot of dead stuff because it's in the middle of the winter um, and the ferns start laying down, they're laying down. And some of these ferns on Vancouver Island, they're five, six feet high in July. They're, they're like, they're up to, my, up to my shoulders. They're huge. So yeah, it's, it's largely seasons. And, and the subject matter and what it's reflecting back. Is it, is, it, is it a warm scene? Is it a cool scene? But yeah, I think that when the clouds come over and the sun's out versus those two things, sure, it can make a change. And it can, um, yeah, I guess if you don't know, then you just try both polarizers. You know, you got, I carry both of them with me all the time. And you really can't go wrong with either at the end of the day because you, know, you just choose one and just shoot the subject and you can do some post-processing changes. One other thing too that, I, that I've noticed with the LB color combo is that it has a bit more reflection control. So it's a little bit more, um, how can I say it? Uh, a little richer in regards to uh, eliminating glare. And we'll see that on the sample, on the, um, the comparison images. Um, that's just something that I've observed in the last few months. Again, it's pretty small. It, it's not huge. And keep in mind, these two filters are only about a third of a stop difference in density. So that's probably why I'm not seeing a huge shift. But yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a difference in, in the way that they will ref, um, a reflection control of wet foliage. As, as an example, it could be wet paint on a car, could be a wet sidewalk on a cityscape shot or a, a, a travel shot, lots of different applications. Uh, let's see here if we can go to another one. So another forest shot with, um, this one's got lots of reds in it. Uh, so you can see how the LB color combo is really warming up this scene and bringing out the greens and the reds. But the cedars, they got a lot of red on them. And this is at the end of the end of fall, where they're really, really, um, as I said, probably already had some rain. Um, yeah, this was, uh, this was about November one year, a couple of years ago. So it would have already had some rain. And it, it, the reflection control right in here, I remember when I dialed it in, if you take all this glare out right in here where this bark is all wet. Um, so it's, it's, it's great. Either one of them, but this LB color combo is a little bit stronger for the reducing glare on the wet foliage. So, but you know, a little teeny bit. It's not not a big huge difference, but there is a difference. So, um, what else can I say about this one? Yeah, the reds. It's uh, it's pulling out, and I didn't have the infused polarizer at this time because it's only been out for seven months or so, give or take. Um, so it would have been interesting to try the the infused because it probably would have at this time of the year with this subject it probably would have tried both because um, you're kind of right on that cusp of the, either one could work. Um, 
Okay, so we'll, uh, any other questions that are popping up? We've got a few I've been holding on to because they're not super relevant to your current topics. Um, one of them was, do you take the UV filter off the lens before using either of these filters? I would. Uh, I don't use a UV filter myself, so I, I, I wouldn't recommend. Well, I, I think another way to think about it is the reason why I would say no is just take the UV filter off is that it's not really serving a purpose to photograph through another piece of glass. So, you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know if Singray I don't think it. technically speaking, you have to take it off. The UV filter does yeah. come with threads on the front, so you can put a polarizer in front of it. And sure. I know a lot of photographers keep the UV filter on all the time, because if you're going to damage something, you'd rather damage your filter than your lens. Um, so a lot of people sure. do. Um, and the warming effect with the UV filter from Singray is pretty subtle. Um, so I would say experiment in the field and, and see how you feel about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you could experiment in the field. If if I was doing it, I would take the UV filter off and put the put a polarizer on without it. The other thing that could happen if you weren't using a lens hood is that you could get some glare. You could get some refraction of light bouncing between the two the the two filters. So if you weren't careful, depending on where the sun was. So yeah, stacking filters is it, it can get risky. You know, I've done it before with long exposures and stacking 15 stop on top of a polarizer and <laughs> things can get weird pretty quick um, with light bouncing between uh, the glass elements. So that's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind about stacking filters. But like what Michelle said, it's a personal preference. Some people swear by UV filters and it protects the front of their lens. I've never used one. I've never used a UV filter in 15, 17 years. So, but it, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you have to do. Um, but yeah, I just, I think another way to think about it is that does it have a purpose photographically for what you're doing? It is that if you think that it has a purpose by putting the polarizer on the UV, then go ahead and do it. Um, I think that that's just a good way to think about all these things that we're doing is that what purpose is it serving and do I have to have it on there? Do I have to use it? So uh, we have anything else uh, lurking about? Um, Lance? Yeah. What, um, what raw processing program do you use? Do you set the Adobe sRGB or Adobe RGB? Does that affect themselves or the polarizer? Like, does it affect how the polarizer works? I don't think that it does. Like my camera set at Adobe RGB. So, you know, to answer Lance, I haven't tried switching my color profile with different polarizers. It just wouldn't, I just wouldn't think to do that. Um, but I can't see why it would change like reflection control and things like that. I don't see how it would change it. Like sRGB is just a smaller color gamut and Adobe RGB is bigger and then Pro Photo is even bigger. So it's just, a, it's, a, it's a bigger color gamut. sRGB is basically for the web and Adobe RGB and Pro Photo would be more for printing, you know, where you would be putting an image in a magazine or on a calendar or something like that. Um, that's what I've been taught. So yeah, I don't really have a very good answer for Lance on that one, but I, my suspicion is it's not gonna make a big difference. Just put everything in Adobe RGB and that's what I, stock agencies, a lot of them require Adobe RGB. And that's why I have my color set at, a, at Adobe RGB, not Profoto and not sRGB. If I'm making a little JPEG to go on the website, it's sRGB. So, um, so that's kind of an indirect answer there for Lance. <laughs> so, <laughs> and what raw processing program do you use? I've actually switched uh, partially. I use DxO now. Um, so a few of the earlier images in the presentation were done with DxO. Um, but prior to that, I used Lightroom. And I still use Lightroom sometimes because there's still a few features in DxO that I'm getting used to. But I love DxO, like it's just, it's an incredible post-processing 
platform and the noise reduction is incredible. Um, and Topaz is great for noise reduction too. Um, because sometimes, it, like using these polarizers, it's it's smart to have a good noise reduction and a clean noise reduction program that's not smoothing the image as it's getting control over the over quote unquote noise or higher ISO. Um, and just the the colors from DxO, they're just they're so true and rich. And some things I can't even put my finger on. I just like the look and the feel of the processing that happens with both. I shoot both Nikon and Fuji. I use Fuji for some wildlife and I mainly Nikon for landscape. Well, actually all my landscapes are Nikon. I don't use the Fuji for landscapes. Fuji sometimes for macro because the long lens can actually be great for macro. Uh, but the, the color profiles that they have with the XO, they just seem to work. The whites are white. The recovery of the shadows and the highlights, I find them to be superior than Lightroom. Again, this isn't, I don't want to bash Lightroom or anything. Because there's millions of people around the world that use it. I just don't find the whites white. So I've done my own testing and yeah, it's just to answer, I think it was Lance that asked that, but um, yeah. So anyways, I think that the XO has a 30 day free trial. Um, so I, I just encourage you to just try it and just see if you like it. And it doesn't use a catalog system either. Uh, I And that's another thing that I like. It's just the catalog system drives me crazy because then you go from one computer to the next, you've lost your catalog. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's anyways, the DXO works and you can put it on two computers. So, but again, it's whatever you get used to, whatever you like, you know, like there's, geez, there's probably a good four or five. Capture One's another one that's really good. There's some people just love Capture One for their raw processing. Um, I just bought a Singray LB warming circular polarizer last month. How do these filters compare? Now that's one that I haven't used a lot. Um, I think that with the warming polarizer, you're not going to get a big boost in the color saturation. So that's going to be the difference there is that it's, it's, it's going to be just warming, but it's not going to boost your greens or reds or, or whatever. Um, so that's, that's the big difference between the, the infused polarizer and the LB color combo. Again, I, I haven't used the LB warming very much, but um, that's, the, that's the main difference there. So, and in some situations that might be exactly what you want. Maybe it's in Arizona photographing the, the sandstone and all the, all the warm colors that are there. Maybe you just want a little bit more warmth with a, with a warming LB polarizer and that might just work. But yeah, I haven't used that one very much. I have it, but I just, I'm really happy with these two and they, these two do what I want them to do. So um, I don't see any other questions, Michelle, or keep rolling along. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Okay. Uh, so another example of the LB color combo. So increased saturation with the blue. Um, and you can see the uh, pop in the clouds. Again, the I, I've got some raw files coming up. We're actually going to be there pretty soon, a couple minutes, where it's going to show that the sky without a polarizer. But so... Uh, yeah, but again, when you want increased contrast, more pop, some warmth, both of these polarizers do a good job in the sky. Um, then if you want more warmth, then you go with the LB color combo. And then th you see, this is at the end of the summer. This is later summer. Grass is starting to get a bit burnt. Vancouver Island, sometimes it doesn't rain for two or three months in the summer, often. You get into August, September, stuff's really dry and it's really pale looking. And the LB color combo works perfect for this kind of scene. Again, it's, it's knowing what tool to use for what scene and for what you want to communicate and what you want to create as a photographer. Uh, I wanted to warm up this scene because it wasn't very warm. It was, it was pretty burnt. So I, I remember it quite clearly. So Again, that's another, it's a, it's a reason why I chose this particular polarizer at the, at the time. 
Um, yeah, so again, extra vibrance as well. You know, the same same type of things in the previous images, just a different subject matter, different different shot to give you an example of what you would get when you use the LB color combo in this type of scene. Uh, as you can see, the grass is pretty pretty burnt. Not a lot of green. A little bit of green, not much. Um, and the forest, more warming again. Uh, reflection control. I remember this boardwalk. Boardwalk was all wet. Again, dialing in the polarizer. Boom. Most of that glare is gone. And then these roots. These roots would have had a lot of glare on them because these roots are always wet. They're, they're, these roots are wet in the middle of a drought because <laughs> it's uh, right on the coast. There's always mist and fog circulating around. And, you know, the rich, the rich greens, the reflection control on the greens. And then the bark on this tree, too. Little bit of little bit of highlight on there, but that's probably just because where the sun was. But um, so several different things happening on this image that are attributed to the LB color combo: warming, reflection control, uh, the greens being boosted, and the reds being being boosted. So the reds and the bit of the reds in the boardwalk, and a little bit of the dirt in the foreground, and and reds on the on the tree too. I don't even know if that's a cedar. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, so it's another example of uh, how you can apply the LB color combo to a uh, to a nature uh, forest shot. So yeah, we have wet trees, roots, bark, leaves, all that type of stuff. And again, extra extra saturation, extra vibrance. So yeah, you're getting extra vibrance as compared to the infused. It's not given a lot of vibrance. It's increasing the saturation, but keeping it neutral. That's the big, that's the big difference. Uh, LB color combo, not neutral. It's adding warmth to the colors as they're boosting them. And that could be termed as being vibrant. Um, yeah, so that's so I think we're gonna get into some comparisons. This is a neat part. Um, yeah, so I've got two side-by-side -side comparisons with the infused and the LB color combo, and then without any filter. And they're, these are all raw files. So I didn't do anything to the files. All I did was just create TIFFs and then JPEGs for the PowerPoint. Uh, no, um, no editing. I think there might've just been, um, uh, what do you call it? Perspective. This perspective, would, would because that's what happens. I think I just put these in Lightroom and the perspective will uh, stop like appear from being bent or something like that. But it was done all the same on, 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 on all the images. So, but no, no uh, color, white balance, contrast, highlight shadows, no adjustments with that on these images coming up. So just the perspective control in case anything was bent, you know, uh, uh, an anomaly with the lens in essence. Okay, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get into it. So this is a, it's a fun part here. So no filter used on this one. And again, these were just taken like a week ago. So it's, it's winter on Vancouver Island. And this is, this is what you see in the, in the rainforest in the, in the winter, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit dull. There's still, still greens and still reds. And you can see that there's a bit of glare on these ferns in the foreground. So this is again, and then you can see the uh, the shutter speed. I think I changed it. I increased the ISO on the next images, um, and I realized nah, I think I'm going to use these. I'm going to use these on the presentation. Um, so pretty, it's just that's just a raw file. It's just basically it's a little flat, but it is what it is. But um, so you know, glare on the ferns, glare. Oh yeah, on the fallen log, you can see glare on the wet this wet log, this wet fallen tree in here, a little bit of glare on the roots, not much. Um, and it was pretty soft light as well. So, and again, that's, that's the, that's the winter too. Um, and then we, we have a really good question, actually. Critical sure. to this comparison, what white balance was set in camera? Again, I still argue auto white balance will remove the warming provided by the elbow com LB combo, making the comparison with the infused polarizer very forced. Very which? 
forced. Forced. Okay. Um, I, I, I understand, I think I understand what the person's asking, but regardless of where the white balance is set on the camera, the white balance is still being shifted when you put the LB color combo or the infused polarizer on. Right. Like it's, it, it's the, the polarizer is, when it goes neutral or it warms, it's changing the white balance from if there was no if there was no polarizer it doesn't matter if it's in auto or not it, it doesn't matter what the camera is set in unless it's locked in at 5000 degrees kelvin you got locked like any of the auto settings the white balance is going to shift regardless of what polarizer you put on with the lb color combo what happens is that it it shifts the white balance more to the warming side 6000 6500 yeah, and I didn't put those specs on here. I just didn't think about it. So I didn't think about putting the degrees Kelvin. I guess on, an, on another presentation at another time, I could do that. But I do remember glancing at them, and it was around about 5,500-ish, 5, maybe 58 for the neutral, and then put the LB color combo on. It was at least 500 degrees Kelvin or more, depending on the scene, uh, in warmth. So... It, it doesn't, it, to me, it doesn't matter what the white balance was set in auto, whatever, a natural light auto or just auto, it, it, it wouldn't matter. So yeah, there's nothing that's being negated or anything like that. It's, yeah, like this one here is infused neutral. So again, you can see how it's, it's, not, it's not warmed up. So you can see from the previous one, so you go that one, so that's no filter. And then we go to this one. You can see how the greens are, are boosted. And again, if I put these side by side, they're almost going to be too small on the screen. I, I, I kind of waffled back and forth with that. Do I put two side by side or I just put a big one on one screen and a big one on another screen? Um, so the greens are boosted. You can see the reds are boosted in the, in the dirt. And then you've got reflection control. So we go back again. See the glare on the on the ferns, and then you go back again. Less glare on the ferns, and then we go to the LB color combo, and it's even warmer still. So you can see how the degrees Kelvin is pushed more to the to the right to 6500 uh, in that range. It, it, again, it's going to depend on the scene, depend on the season, depend on the light, but. Um, yeah, like I think that the LB color combo was very effective on this shot. And that's not edited. But zero editing. I didn't do anything except for whatever Lightroom does for perspective control, which is done to the same on all three images. That, that's not going to change color. And that's not going to change white balance or contrast or anything. That's just straightening a cro crooked tree or a crooked building or something. Um, yeah, so you can really see the the significant difference between the neutral look of the infused neutral polarizer so the greens are very true to green like that's what those greens look like and that's what the path looks like and that's what that log looks like and then you go here and then everything's just warmed up a little bit more so and again if that amount of warmth is too much then that's where you could change your white balance. And maybe it would be something selective. Maybe you would increase the white balance in the reds and reduce them in the greens, or it could be whatever you wanted to do to create some more depth and separation in your image. But again, just to, I think that these are really cool comparisons, useful comparisons, but these aren't edited. So this is just the polarizer giving the effect. So you can see slight warming effect with the reds and the greens. So the reds and the greens are being warm. And that's giving the visual effect of vibrance. So the reds and the greens aren't being boosted any more than they are on the infused. It's just that the LB color combo has a warming part to it. And again, I don't know what the technical part of that is, but that's the proprietary information in the background of Singray. They've got a way to do that. So, uh, and a bit more contrast. I see a little bit more punch and contrast 
And between the two, kind of sorry, kind of maybe doing this too quick and might be a bit disorienting. I'll stop doing that. Um, but of the three, this one was my favorite. And that's without doing any creative editing or any localized contrast adjustments or anything. So uh, I think that that's pretty powerful to, and I know it's not, a, it's not a fabulous photo or anything. It's just, I was out on a hike and I thought, well, I'm going to get some new pictures for the PowerPoint on uh, during the week. And there was a scene and I photographed it again. It's, it's not something that is fine art or anything. I um, think it's a really good representation of what yes, the two polarizers that's a, do. That's exactly what I wanted to do. It's not about the composition and, you know, it's a little busy and all that kind of stuff. And that's not the point is that, yeah, exactly what Michelle just said. It's a very good representation of the difference. Again, I'll do this slowly so we can sit with it for a little bit. So I'm not kind of disorienting people here with things spinning on the screen, but you know, this is neutral. So this isn't, this isn't being warmed very much, if anything, very, very slightly from no filter. And then, you know, I think that that's a significant difference. And that's just in the, the polarizer choice, the difference between neutral and fused, and fused neutral, so neutral, and then LB color combo, you could even call it LB color combo slightly warming polarizer. Right, so you could throw that in there because in essence, that's what it's doing when you're comparing it to the infused one. So, you know, in an ideal world, you're like, you know, because I'm an ambassador, I get to test the products and stuff and I, I have that, it's a great benefit that I have both. But in an ideal world, if you could afford it, have both. And, and that would be the, 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 the best of both worlds is to be able to choose the tool that you want, depending on the scene, the, the, the color temperature, the season, uh, is it cloudy out, is it bright sun? Do you want more reflection control of those? Is the foliage really wet or is it just a little bit damp? You, you know, and then you will have the tool that you want or the tool that you need with you. So if you had to choose one, eh, it just depends on what you photograph more of. You know, if you photograph maybe more in the winter, then maybe the LB color combo would be better. You know, where things need to be warmed a bit more in the winter. Yeah, you know, again, it's, I say that cautiously because I think it depends on where you live. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, I, I, I quite like that example. Um, you can even see the reflection control on this log you know, very, very little glare on this log compared to if we go back and then we'll move, then we'll move on. You can see, see how the glare on this log and these gla this glare is a subtle distraction for the eye and the viewer. You know, it's just, you're, you don't want your eye being stuck on glare and things that are white and bright that are unwanted. So you can even see that glare is is virtually gone even with the infused neutral and then you go to the lb color combo and it's gone and it's warm so you know I, I like that and again this is a winter shot so i like it warmed up and if i go back here in july and shoot this same scene it'll look like i'm in a completely different park for one thing the foliage will be completely different all this white in the background it'll all be gone up in the in the far distance that'll all be filled in with foliage. I'd shoot this with the infused polarizer would be my first go-to because it would be much warmer in the summer as the color temperature and I wouldn't wanna warm it up even more. It might look a little bit too much if I use the LB color combo, if that makes any sense in the summer. So, okay, well, we'll move on from that. I think I kind of hit home with the, what uh, the examples was to achieve there and Let's see. So we've got a seascape one that we're going to do for an example. This one's cool too. So, uh, so no filter used, 160th of a second. Um, so, you know, kind of, you know, a little edgy water, you know, sharp. Uh, sky's kind of a little lifeless. Uh, you know, it's, it's basically, it's a, it's a kind of a flat one dimensional image and it's a raw file. So that's what comes out of the camera. Uh, again, this is no filter. Um, again, this is just a snapshot. Uh, I think I did it on Monday. Like, so again, it's a winter shot. This is where I live. This is Sydney Pier. So I only live a few kilometers from the pier. 
Um, and then, so we, we pop in an infused neutral polarizer and the blues stay true. So again, it's neutral, the blues are staying blue. Um, the blues aren't being warmed up, nothing's being warmed up. If it's being warmed up, it's not by much. You know, our eyes aren't really noticing it a whole lot. Um, a little bit of reflection control on the ocean. Um, but the big thing is, is that you can see the contrast and the pop starting to come in the clouds. See, these clouds are a little flat and you got some more pop in the clouds. And again, this, is, this isn't any editing. These images aren't edited. So I can put way more pop in those clouds with a couple of simple adjustments, either in DxO or Lightroom or whatever. It doesn't really matter uh, for that. Um, and then we go to the LB color combo example. You can see how it's slightly warm. So again, the blues, now they kind of shifted a little bit. You know, that's because the white balance has shifted. Again, it doesn't matter if you have it in auto or whatever you had it in, is that you put on the LB color combo, it's going to warm it up. It's going to shift the white balance to a higher number, 6,500 or whatever. And this one, probably not that high but it'll, it'll add warmth to the image. So you can see that in these blues. Keep your eyes on this blue down here, just above the pier. We'll go back, see those blues there are blue. Those aren't warmed up. Go back to this one, won't do this too many times. A little bit, it's almost like it's a little bit paler. It's because it's the blue has lost the blue. It's not, it's not the ideal polarizer for this kind of scene. The infused one was, in my mind, was better. It was a better choice. It, it's, it's a blue sky. I don't want to warm up the sky. So if there was a big part of the subject matter that was, say, like the waterfall from half a dozen slides back, where there was a little bit of blue sky and then there's this sandstone rock wall that's like the main course of the image, then that's completely different because it's where do your eyes going to in that scene? They're going to the waterfall and this one, they're going to the sky because the sky is like 70% of the image. So yeah, LB color combo wouldn't be my choice for this type of composition at this time of the year and this and the blue sky. So. A uh, little bit more reflection control, but it's minor. It's really, really minor splitting hairs. Um, increased contrast. We'll do one more flip back to see if we can notice much of a difference in the sky. And I don't really see maybe a little teeny bit with the LB color combo, a little bit more because it's, it's adding a little bit more kind of gray on top of the clouds, a little bit more contrast. But if you wanted to post-process this one, you could just choose the blues and then cool down the blues and you'll be, you know, you probably have something more eye appealing. But um, yeah, if you wanna have less post-processing time that it would be, the infused one would have been the one to choose from. The blues were truer. So that's the, that's that example. Um, and I think that we have, yeah, now we're into tips and cautions. So maybe I can just take a slight pause to see if there's any, any questions. Uh, somebody has to leave, that's cool. Um, I think we're good on questions for now. Okay, um, excellent. Someone, someone did mention, um, if you don't take the UV filter off when you're using a polarizer, you could get some vignetting. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a great that's a great uh, point. Thank you very much for bringing that up. But yes, depend depending on what lens you've got on and what you're what you're shooting, that's an excellent point. Like on a on a Nikon fourteen to thirty uh, mirrorless lens that I that I had at fourteen millimeters, you can't see anything um, because it's just it's it, it because of the the way that the lens is designed. You put in thin a thin, well, actually, it's another thing to mention, too, is the thin versus the thick. When I have the thin polarizer on, I can't see the edges on one. But if I stack, I got to go to 16 millimeters. So that's a very good point that that person brought up. Is that it, So I would just add to it is if you're shooting really wide angle, 
then you'd have to take off the UV filter or you'd be doing a bunch of clone stamping when you get home to take the vignetting out. Well, and that's the trade-off too. On a thin yeah. filter, you don't have the treads on the front. You can't stack. Yeah, so. there you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So, and that's actually another note that's going to come up here in the, um, in the tips is that if you, if you are going to stack and say stack a neutral density filter with a polarizer, you put the polarizer on first so you can polarize because the polarizer is the one that you're gonna to wanna to have the front threads on to put the ND filter on front of the polarizer because you put the ND filter on first you, and, you, and the polarizer on second, you won't be able to see what you're polarizing. Polarizer's gotta go on first, set the polarizing, then put the ND filter on without turning the polarizer. So it's, a, it's not rocket science, but it just takes an attention to detail to do it. So you're not, when you're, twisting on the, the ND on front of the polarizer that you're not moving the polarizer after you just set it for polarizing, if that makes any sense. I'll go through that again because it, it comes up uh, in, the, in the tips and tricks and cautions part here that we're gonna get into. Uh, but that was a very good point uh, to bring up about the vignetting and uh, just using two pieces of glass to shoot from, to shoot through. Um, yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be drawbacks. Um, so someone asked you, does the infused filter come in a thin version? Yes, it does. It does. Um, if you use the thin version, would that reduce or eliminate the vignetting? Uh, it does for me at 14 millimeters on the Nikon. Um, I don't see anything at, with the thin, all, all the filters that I use when I use them by themselves and I don't stack that much, pretty rare. They're all thin. Um, you know, the thin, you just have to, like, I don't have big gigantic hands or anything like that. So I think that if you, if you had really big hands, then they're a little harder to handle. Um, but they're, I, I just, I love the thins. I'm just used to them. Um, so to answer your question, I've never seen any material of the filter, i.e. even yetting on the thin mount. So if you're shooting wide angles by the thin mount, but then you won't be able to stack an ND on the front of it. So it's just a trade-off. If you're not, if you're never going to stack, don't worry about it. Then get the thin model. That would be the answer to that question. Um, I'd always go with the thin over the thick because the thick one, you're going to see it at 14, 16 millimeters on a wide angle. And Canon, Nikon, Sony, uh, you're going to see some material, but not on the thin. And then another question that came up, I can actually kick this one. I have a sure. Stingray neutral circle, circular polarizer from years back. Is that still a current product or been changed to the newer ones that you're talking about tonight? And that is absolutely, that's a core product for us. Um, it, it definitely is still a current product. These filters that we're talking about, all of the lighter, brighter, there's three different versions of the lighter, brighter. There's the color combo, there's the warming. Um, there, those are just, they do a little bit more a polarizer they are like two they're like, like a two hybrid in one yeah exactly that when i talk to customers about them i just say they're kind of in a different category they're almost like a hybrid mm -hmm. and i know that singray that's just my own terminology i don't singray doesn't use that but they're they're in a different category all by themselves the lbs you know they, they work for it yeah so i agree with what michelle just said that that that's just perfect yeah because that what that lady has still exists it's just in a different category or that person. Um, is there anything else, Michelle, that was coming up? Yeah. Can you explain the difference between saturation and warming? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So warming was, it would be color temperature. So warming, warming up an image would be changing the color temperature and saturation. You're boosting the actual brightness of the color, brightness and contrast of the color. Um, so you're actually changing the color that's completely different than the changing the white balance. So what the LB color combo does is it does both. Whereas the infused is doing a way less warming, almost nothing, just a little teeny bit of warming. Um, and it's doing an increase in saturation. So that's the main difference between the two polarizers is that one's warming, one's not. One, the, the LB is a bit more uh, vibrance and kind of liveliness to it because it's also warming as it's saturating the colors. So it's kind of one on top of the other. 
it, that in essence to me is it's giving a, an increased vibrance effect. It looks like it's being more vibrant. Whereas the infused polarizer, that's not the point of it. The point is not to have more vibrance. The point is to have a more boost in the colors, but neutral. So no warming, still the reflection control, uh, boost in the reds and the greens, uh, those things that we've been talking about, but those are the distinct differences between the two that we're talking about tonight is the, the warming versus not warming. And where the LB color combo is giving that vibrance appearance because it's kind of like it's warming on top of saturating, if that makes any sense. Um, right. Yeah. You do both. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So th that's why I, I just, I love having both of them because they both, they both work differently and there's a use for both. So, um, so with the, with the LB and the infused, this is just a tip. You can experiment with it, but sometimes, especially with really, really deep, rich blue skies that may probably going to be in the summer, you know, late spring, summer, try turning back the LB color combo or the infused. And I didn't use the infused a lot with skies this past summer, and I didn't have it the previous summer because it wasn't made. So, um, so turn it back a little bit. What I mean is that if it's dialed into full strength, just try turning it back a little teeny bit. I find it to be a little bit more natural looking at certain times of the year, when, especially with the blues. So tinker with that. Um, and I found that to be um, a, a nice uh, effect. Again, it's a subtle turn back. It's just, it's not a big, big turn, 16th or an eighth of a turn back from being dialed in full. And then another tip is to be aware of, uh, of movement or unwanted movement. Um, so like again with this, um, with these ferns here in this shot, these were very, very cooperative ferns. They weren't, they weren't moving. They were just dangling there and again in a valley, not moving. I was able to do a 25 image focus stack at a 10th of a second with the LB color combo to give that vibrance that I wanted. I wanted that kind of that punch in them and to boost up the greens, warm it, warm the greens a little bit. And it was a spring shot, if I remember correctly, maybe kind of mid spring. So not, not super, super warm yet. So I wanted to warm it up a little bit. Um, yeah. So just being aware of the three to four stops of light that's being lost is that you just boost the ISO or change your depth of field if you want some more shutter speed. So just being aware of that is that it's a, it's a drawback to any filter. It's just not sing rate filters. It's any filter on the market is that you're losing light and losing light shutter speed is going to go down. So, but the cameras, the modern day cameras are so good with ISO that I've got lots of forest shots at 800, 1600 ISO, and it's just nobody knows the difference. Once you, once you do a slight post processing to them, it, it's, you can't even tell. And when they're blown up, big, you can't even tell. So, you know, I think that what 1600 ISO today, you know, was like what 400 ISO was 10 years ago. You know, it, it's just because this technology's changed it. You know, and this is at 800 ISO, and could you really tell? You know, it, it's just uh, just so much has changed with technology. So use that to your advantage. You know, that don't be afraid to um, afraid is not really the right word, but or to be you know, don't be overly cautious about increasing the ISO because it's just it's something that I just get used to doing it using these filters to get the effect that I want. So. That's the tip there. Uh, I think I got a few more tips and tricks coming up. <laughs> this is a bit of a funny one because I've caught myself with this several times. Shooting, shooting, shooting horizontal, got it dialed in. Oh, I wanna do a vertical composition, whip the camera around on the top of the head, tripod head. And then sometimes I forget to, to twirl the polarizer because now it's not polarized anymore. So when you, when you flip your camera to vertical, remember to repolarize your polarizer. So look through the viewfinder or your LCD screen 
And yeah, you'll have to turn it probably half a turn and to get it to polarize again after you've turned the camera. It might sound like a really obvious tip, but man, I've done it so many times. And it's just like, uh, usually I catch myself after a shot and I think, oh, yeah, right. I can see the glare on the ferns now that I got to dial it back in. Um, so it might seem like an obvious one, but yeah, just keep that in your mind. If you're, if you shoot back and forth between horizontal and vertical and you use a polarizer, just remember to repolarize again. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, check for fog and cold, damp conditions and any filter can fog up. It's just not seeing ray filters. I've used over the years several different brands and they're they can all be prone to fogging you know if you're i'll quote it in fahrenheit for american folks but you know like this shot here where i'm in the forest it's probably 35 to 38 degrees it was only like three or four degrees celsius it's a tough tough time to shoot in the rainforest when it's that cold and it's damp because often the filters will fog up in seconds. So what helps is Singray's Rayview Optical Cleaner. Um, they make an anti-frog spray, and it's also a general cleaner as well to get any kind of grit or oil off of the front of your filter. So it's a it's a good product, and I recommend that. Uh, Thank but you it's for that plug, by the way. <laughs> Pardon me. Thank you for that plug. Yeah, yeah, and. <laughs> The other thing too is that just always be checking the front of the filter too. Like it's it's a creepy thing, is that it creeps up on you bit by bit. Sometimes it'll be on there right away, and then sometimes it'll be in the I'll be in the forest. It'll be forty five degrees, and then it, the, the dew point will be enough away from each other that it's not going to fog up. And then all of a sudden the temperature drops, and stuff starts fogging up, but I don't notice it right away. You know, and then you see the images are getting a little bit, ah, that doesn't look right. Just keep checking the front of the, 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 the filter. And the other thing too, is that Singray makes those caps. The caps are good too. You know, especially if you're walking around and through the forest is to use a cap to, to put over the front of the, the filter to, it's like a little pressure cap. It's not the ones with the springs like that come from the manufacturers the like Nikon and whatnot, but it just, it, just a pressure cap that goes over top of the front of the filter. Those are handy. Um, but yeah, just keep checking it, especially if you're in these types of environments. Even if you're in you know, Arizona, it's dusty. Or it's a creepy kind of thing that it's a little bit here, a little bit there. Is it keep checking your filter to make sure it's clean and, and that uh, it's not fogging up. But um, and oh yeah well we talked about this one earlier stacking filters for long exposures with a cpl a circular polarizer uh make sure you get a, a polarizer that's got the front threads on it which is called the standard version in Singray's language Mo most of my polarizers are the thin mount because if i'm shooting at 14 millimeters i don't want to see it um i.e vignetting um uh, so but just the, the the one the big tip to hit home here is to make sure you've got your polarizer on first if you're going to stack apart from the uv kind of debate um that one doesn't matter um because this uv is just clear uh, but yeah you if you've got an nd filter on first and you put the polarizer on second you're not going to be able to see enough of the scene to be able to polarize maybe if it was a five stop you might get away with it but if it's a 15 stop, forget it. You're not going to see anything to be able to polarize. So polarizers definitely got to go on first if you're going to put a 15 stop and do a long exposure in the middle of the day. Um, done lots of those. So um, yeah, uh, but uh, that's another, to get deeper into that, that's another presentation. That's another day. Uh, so that's the tips and we're in the home stretch here so this is just a little bit of contact information with me i do private uh photo tours on vancouver island there's a web link there if anybody is traveling into bc in the next you know next year or whatever i've just had an inquiry for june um from a guy in england um that's coming here and I do a multi-day wildlife photography workshop in the Great Bear Rainforest uh, that's in BC. So there's a link for that. And 
other general contact information. If you want to follow me on Facebook, I've got a following there and Instagram. And, um, and I have my own Facebook group as well called Everything Wild. And that's uh, the last link there. And so I think that concludes it. Awesome. If there are any last minute questions, yeah. pop them in the Q&A window while we're giving you a few minutes for that. Um, one of the questions that always comes up, Dave, is what's in your bag on an average trip? What do you pack? How many filters? What are they? Sure. Are they a tripod? Sure. Yeah, tripod always. Yeah, yeah. Especially for these slower shutter speeds. I have a, a Gizzo 1545 Traveler tripod. I've had that for, geez, probably least a half a dozen years. It's a faithful tripod. I 95% of my landscape images, the waterfalls that you've seen, the forest shots, uh, I don't think anything was handheld. Even the snapshots with the pier um, for the testing, uh, they were all taken with a tripod. I use uh, an F-stop, a 40 liter Anja backpack. I really love the F-stop uh, gear. Uh, there's a steel frame inside the, or aluminum frame inside the backpack. So it, it, it doesn't swing around on your back. You can hike for miles and miles, you know, wearing yourself out. The, 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 the backpacks fit very well. So uh, in regards to the filters, uh, so I've got like uh, one of these packages that I carry with me. It's one of, one of these ones that uh, folds out. Um, yeah, just trying to make sure I show it properly there. I can see. Um, so I, I carry um, the Brian Hansel waterfall filter. I use that occasionally. Uh, the infused and the LB color combo, all in 82 millimeter uh, and thins. And I carry a five stop, a 10 stop, and a 15 stop ND. So there's six filters in this pouch and, or six pockets. And I carry six filters that I like. So, and, and I also use a three stop uh, uh, soft split grad and a hard. I carry those with me too. I don't use them a lot, but if it's a sunrise or a sunset that really has a, like it's really bright in the, in the sunrise or sunset and it's dark in the foreground, I, I can get it in one shot most of the time with a split grad. So Sing Ray Filters makes a, a, an assortment of I call them split grad filters, graduated filters. They're like rectangular filters. They go in a bracket. Um, so you can use those along with the LB color combo or the infused. You can use them along with them. And, and with the long exposures, uh, you can use those split grads with the, the, the more slow NDs. Uh, usually carry, uh, well, the backpack will take, I carry three lenses and two uh, camera bodies. And I usually have a headlamp, a little blower, like if I need to blow any dust out of the, uh, off of the, the camera sensor. Um, headlamps, uh, crucial. I've got like a miner's headlamp that I paid a fortune for, but it's, it's awesome. Like it's got like a 12 hour battery on it. Um, what else do I have in my backpack that would be any kind of, of, of use? So for lenses, 14 to 30, 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200. Uh, those are my three main lenses for, for landscape photography. Um, I think that's about it. I, I don't have, I got a lot less stuff in my backpack than I ever have in the past. I used to have pano kits and gear for doing panos and I just do them by hand now and they work out fine. So, you know, more is not always better, but the filters of they've, uh, they've been a, a, a main stable in my backpack for 15 years. So um, and you learn over time what you're definitely going to use and what you can leave at home. <laughs> excellent for you to say that. Yes, you do learn over time. And that's, I, I think I'm a living example of that is that 15 years ago, I had one of everything. I had all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. You know, I had this big low pro backpack that would be like 40 pounds of camera gear in it. And yeah, sure. I'd use the one part here or there once in a while, but over time I started to distill and just really simplify my setup. And yeah, it's, it's super, super simple. And yeah, like the images that you saw tonight, they're all taken with, you know, it's, it's high-end camera gear, but it's all simple. It, it, there's, no, there's no tricky things. I don't use remotes anymore. 
I, I complete even for long exposures. I don't use remotes anymore. It's just there's more stuff in the backpack to distract me. And yeah, I, I um, yeah, I think that, that that pretty much covers it. I don't think there's anything else that's uh, out of the ordinary that I have in my backpack. But yeah, the the F stop gear backpacks, Gizo tripods, the Singray filters, they've been main stables with me for several years. Those three brands. They, they, they're they all three brands are tried, tested, and true. They don't break. They don't wear out. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, and it's not cheap stuff. And, you know, I, and I do get that obstacle sometimes when I talk about Singray filters and especially with the Canadian exchange rate. But I also bring it back to them. I said, well, if you want to make some really cool images and you want products that last 10, 15 years or more, you got to pay for it. And break it down over cost over years, it's actually cheaper. Yeah, so. especially, you know, it's funny that gets so tripod. I've, I've heard multiple photographers bring that up. That seems to be a really popular option. Yeah. And it's, you know, like Canadian, it's almost a thousand bucks. But, you know, if it lasts 15 years and you spend 500 bucks on a, on a tripod the last five years, you actually spent more money spending 500 bucks every five years. <laughs> So you have to have the money to lay out in the beginning, but often the higher end gear that's quality is actually cheaper long run. So that's what I've found over the years. So, you know, I'm sure that there's going to be an exception to that rule at some point, but uh, yeah. Sometimes so, you get what you pay for. It's Yeah, it's for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. I think that that's it for all of our questions for tonight. I do want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Please engage with Dave on his social media, on his website. If you're interested in his photography workshops, definitely take a look at that. Um, I do want to thank you so much for joining us tonight, Dave. We love having you as a presenter. Oh, um, I think this was a great explanation of the difference between the two filters. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for having me. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Okay. Good night, everyone.